Hello, and welcome to the Cars Contact Club. I am your host, Mr. Feel. And with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Dan and Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. Bob, we gotta stop using our voice to text Mr. Feel impersonator. <laughs> it's pretty rough. And Casey Excellent from Kino Goat Raw Swag dot com. Uh, Kino Raw Goat Swag dot com. But thank you. Okay, Kino Raw Goat Swag dot com. The Commando of Elite of websites. Yes, and we are watching the Commando Elite of movies, the '90s magnum opus, Small Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this one for a while. In the in the seven months since my last go. <laughs> I was I was like, should I do this or the country bears? I was between the both. Oh, thank God. Went you for this. this. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie since it left theaters. Oh man, I, I saw it I saw I, it on video and then grandparents gave me most of the toys and I was like, this is scary. <laughs> they actually made the toys? Yes, they did. They were big. Like I, like, I assumed this had just failed so badly that they, they didn't even make toys. I think they did it at the same time and then it failed. Probably, and then, and then they're like, oh no, we made all this garbage. Guys. Yeah. I have bad news. Oh. They were going to remake this movie and call it Toy Mageddon, <laughs> but it was a Fox thing, so when Disney bought Fox, they canceled it. I'm okay with now this. Now I'm sad. <laughs> now I'm sad. Justin Lin was going to direct it. It would have had the same director as the good Fast and the Furious movies. Oh god damn it! Okay, now that, we that, that now we good. lost that, something. Yeah, that would have that would have been anime as hell. David Cross might have come back. <laughs> might have. He, didn't, he doesn't have anything else going on. He's a movie director. Unfortunately, Blasto cannot come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, I'm not sure that I've ever seen this film. Yes. <laughs> I I think I've seen bits on TV when it aired. That's it. I, I'm, this did you see my toys? excitement went up three points yeah i saw toys but that's such an old film that it's completely hazy in my memory also <laughs> the thing's a bit of a fever dream <laughs> yes people people really hate like this movie reviewed really badly but it's a 90s movie and as we discovered on doing this show a 90s movie reviewing badly means nothing because every critic just had a stick up their ass the entire decade yeah and this was late night. It was 1998. Yeah. So it could mean anything. I don't remember much about it, but I'm excited. Yeah, Phil Hartman and David Cross is in it, so I'm optimistic. Bob, do you... I remember kind of liking this, but also being scared of it as a kid, so I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic. Hmm. Were you scared of it because Tommy Lee Jones is in it? No, it has like a somewhat horror aesthetic, if I remember right. Yeah, th this is this. Uh, there's some scary parts. It's kind of like a, I, I, I'm assuming this was just PG, but it's like a PG version of Gremlins. Uh, it is directed by the director of Gremlins too. Huh? Yeah, it, it has a it has a very similar energy to Gremlins. I would like to note. I've just noticed that the director of Gremlins Two is the director of Gremlins. Okay, that that's what I thought, but <laughs> <laughs> I just needed to be sure. You needed to be accurate. Uh, it has, oh, he did direct Gremlins 2. He yeah. did direct both. For some reason, I thought the director of Gremlins 2 was the only did that one. Uh, it also has Kirsten Dunst in it, and that has me scared. <laughs> she might have some ideas about the sequel, just like she did with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. <laughs> Don't remind me of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> what were her ideas, Wait. <sighs> She's like, uh, Peter should die and I should have a baby and then it's about spider baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like mutant no. spider babies. Like, it, it has, like, eight arms and shit because he has, like, radioactive semen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. And, and, and then I, and I can... Only, the only reason I can even remember that is because I just remember the Penny Arc yep. the comic where... <laughs> Gabe <laughs> screams about it. Yeah, Gabe's like, he doesn't fucking die because he's fucking Spider-Man, you stupid bitch. <laughs> and I was like, this, yeah. this is hilarious. <laughs> this guy is so on tilt because of this bad actress's idea for a Spider-Man <laughs> sequel. Well, the people are part of Amazing Spider-Man 2, they're like the third one. We're thinking about Gwen Stacy's dad being a zombie man who comes back through a spell. <sighs> All Every the writers are so awful. <laughs> Let's let's go watch them. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's watch them. <laughs>
<laughs> Careful. Hello, and we're back. Small Soldiers is a bowl of oatmeal. It is bland, <laughs> inoffensive, but sometimes has things in it like walnuts or pieces of a banana to make it slightly better. So, Dan, what did you think of Small Soldiers? <laughs> Small bowl of oatmeal is an okay experience. I mostly felt nothing going through it. I thought I missed parts of this movie when I saw it in glances on TV, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> you missed nothing. You're like, turns out I actually saw the whole movie. Uh, I, I'm starting to entertain that, actually, that I did see the whole movie. It just it felt so hollow, like it was missing a plot line or some delivery or characterization or something that I assumed I, I hadn't seen the whole thing, clearly. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There was plenty here. It's, it's weird because you see a lot of movies that are similar to this in structure and marketability and other things, but there's usually a bit more development and a bit more layeredness going on in the plot, like multiple layers, an A plot and a B plot or something. There's not really here. Small Soldiers, Soldiers is a very straightforward, pretty bad movie, and uh, I hope I never watch it again. I, I, I'm going <laughs> to... I don't know how you'd ever end up watching it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give it a negative four. Um, there's a Ooh. chance I would rather rewatch to boldly flee, but to say this is worse than Ooh, boldly no, flee is no, just... No, 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 no. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. You could never imply this is a worse film than to boldly flee. So it's a negative four. Uh, I'll go next. This movie was mostly just kind of dull. Um, I think it's ex I think its concept is good on paper, and I think there are really great scenes like the ending i think it was mostly held back by having to be a movie for kids that were too young i think if they had leaned more on um like the the pedigree of the director and like made it a pg-13 movie because it, it does it doesn't have to be r it doesn't have to like have a kid's head being thrown down the stairs like fucking gremlins does because the director is directed gremlins also but it doesn't like it needed more horror movie energy to to make it like fit into the logic of like a campy horror movie more than just kind of a dull kids movie, which is what it had. So I'm going to give it a negative two. KZ. Uh, this was delightful, but the middle portion was a bit longer than I ended up uh, remembering it being uh, the highs it goes to are hilarious and crackheaded, though. And I like Phil Hartman. I'll give it a th uh, three. Bob. I think I was mixing this with another movie in my head to fill out anything. Because it, it <laughs> just, were you just were you just thinking of like Toy Story 2 where all the Barbies get like modified? I I don't know what it was. I thought there was some whole other thing going on in this movie, like like anything else this was really plain and also probably the dumbest thing we've ever watched <laughs> yeah i know that's why it's great yeah Every, it's, the it, amount of the amount of times you're like this isn't realistic i'm like oh my god feel is becoming the cinema since guy it's it, the thing is it's not dumb in a fun way like nothing it cool happens because it's dumb it's just like <laughs> dumb seemingly because it doesn't respect its audience so yeah i'm giving it like i guess a negative Two, yeah, that sounds right. Like I, I would never want to watch it again. It's really boring for most of the play time, and then the yeah. rest is just like, this is so stupid. I can't even have enjoy it. <laughs> now, now before we move on, I have to explain to KZ my issue with this because there is a logic to it. Okay, it's it's that they the show like it's like it's yeah, it's like they show realistic esque parts where like oh they just grab the toy and fucking spike it against the ground. It's fucked. But then there's other parts where the toys are like insurmountable horror movie monsters. Yeah. They should have just been horror movie monsters in every scene. So you're, yeah. <laughs> here's the thing with me, Kizzy. Most movies, like, you know, the Cinema Sins guy, 
most movies go, if you shoot this car, it'll explode and flip and look cool. And he's like, cars wouldn't actually do that ding. Whereas with this, I feel like the movie's like, did you know butts poop chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it, that's, it, that's, it, you're like, no, That's glorious. Don't eat it's that. It's glorious. <laughs> like, like, everyone should be celebrating getting hype when they see that. That fucking power line explode and then the blue EMP wave comes out of it. That, see, that part's like the right kind of stupid. And the part of them putting military chips into the dolls' brains that make them super dolls is yeah. also the right can kind of stupid. And then it, it grabbing be the dumber. flat-headed screwdriver and jamming it into a, into a circuit breaker. See, this is another reason it should have been PG-13. That It should have been PG-13 and he just should have died. <laughs> David, laugh. Cro David Cross yeah. dies from holding a screwdriver wrong. <laughs> Good job, Gizmo. But now we have to get to our segments. Time for our segments. We'll start off, as always, with our favorite character. And Dan, you get to go first. Damn it. So, uh, he has a good scene near the beginning and a good scene at the end. He's the only character that I could actually say is delightful this entire thing. And that, that's a shame. That's a shame. This is maybe the only time I've really delighted in taking this first. Uh, I'm going to say Dennis Leary, uh, his character of yeah. CEO boss. Gil Man, Mars. Military complexman. Uh, yes. He's really strong in the end of the movie with him is such a great scene. You wish more of the movie was that scene. Um, it was that that scene like it's like it just made me mad because it's like why couldn't the whole movie be as good as this scene that man is only in three scenes yeah he I, yeah he was was he more expensive I he's guess in, well yeah he's I mean he's, yeah, Leary, he's more yeah. expensive than David Cross <laughs> uh, he's in the conclusion he's in the beginning of them pitching the toys and then he's at a meeting about the toys those are the three scenes he's in some of those are really brief the meeting one, he's barely on screen. I don't really think they needed him more. It doesn't feel like he's he was just more expensive as much as just he wasn't one of the main characters. It's a shame. He's His character's pretty good. Um, I think we could have developed the two people who invented the toys more to make them yeah better yeah, they, they, they probably should have had a much bigger part in the film instead of just showing up halfway through feel like you could have added like no shit and it would have been pretty decent if you had them more involved earlier in the conflict with the toys and added 15 minutes to the movie developing them and just following them i think that would have maybe helped the movie a bit it would have given it a thorough b plot line that was actually going somewhere maybe get to the maybe get to the last part faster <laughs> Because even my internal memory remembered that part of the movie being more of that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a shame. But yeah, uh, obviously Dennis Leary, con a military complexman, is my favorite character. That ending thing's very real, brave. really good. He, uh, he basically comes in and just goes, what's, what's your problem? And he's like, my fucking house got blown up and it attacked my daughter. And oh, this, this, is, this is a nice amount of zeros. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Phil Spencer. Thank you, sir. Would, would you like me to polish your shoes, sir? <laughs> Man, remember, remember when we were mistaken and thought that CEOs were human beings and not just amoral androids? <laughs> Those were the 90s. <laughs> Some people still collect. live in that dream world. Bob, who's your favorite character? <sighs> this is a little rough. This movie, like, Almost none of the characters, other than Dennis Leary, feel like they have much character going on with them. They don't feel true to life. Um, I'm going to have to go with the main character's mom. <laughs> because she has that scene with the tennis, where she, where they bring yeah. out the flaming tennis launcher, and she's knocking the balls back. And I'm like, this uh, is yeah. something. <laughs> Irene Abernathy. Yeah, that was that was one of the only me m moments in the, this conflict where I was like, oh, that was kind of clever. Yeah, no, that was like a fun dumb. Yeah. Like, the rest of it's just dumb, dumb. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's, these, parts, there's these parts where, like, Gremlins 2 pushes up past the surface of oatmeal. Yeah. <laughs> and and those moments are really great. There's a scene that I, I, I swear, well, we'll get there in scenes, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going yeah. to go into it now. <laughs> okay. You're right. AZ. Uh, Phil Fimple. 
because I love Phil Hartman in that way. He was hilarious. Man. He, his, also because Hart- we realized that he's Dan. Yeah, there is that there is that really the, good the entire The entire scene of him talking about his equivalent of an OLED. And we're just dying. I mean, he's sitting there talking about his plasma TV skin tones, and he's like, wait a second, the image is a bit fuzzy. Is it... Is it the chroma? No, it's just this. I need to fix this. And I'm just losing it. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. And the part where he did, almost died. Did Phil Hartman play anybody in the 90s who wasn't a colossal piece of shit? I don't, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I doubt it. I'm like, this guy could be the same character from Jingle all the way and you would never know. I feel that. See, I um, that's who my brain also went, immediately went to. I think that character is the closest one because he's just obnoxious. Or you could go with Phil Hartman's character. Uh, he, he played in the Stupids. That's a real thing. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the Stupids is a movie based on um a series of books, series of kids books, which is just uh no wait, it's not it's not Phil Hartman. It's Tom Arnold. It's knockoff Phil Hartman. Ah, oh, don't call Tom Arnold that. Oh, he's, no. He's a delightful man. That's what he is. That's what he is. No. Oh, no. No. You know Stop I'm it. right. Stop it. <laughs> Get in the square box. I guess, and my favorite character, no, it can't, it certainly can't be him. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten oh, Dunst. Can't be him. For Kirsten Dunst. No, God, no, not Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> Uh, it's the uh the the commando who who's who blows shit up because his face is really good oh the one with the with showing his big teeth no that no no um the one with like the mohawk oh uh, uh, uh nick nitro yeah nick nitro and with that we gotta go on to our uh our favorite scene Bob gets to start us off for, with with Congrats. favorite scene. This this movie has a few decent scenes at least. Yeah. Um I'm going to choose the help desk one. Uh so <laughs> af- yes. After the toys go insane and <laughs> de- kill, like destroy his shop. He's yeah, calling or they the, fuck the shit up. The main ki- kid is calling tech support trying to tell them what's wrong and it's a lady who's acting like she's a machine basically and won't help him at all <laughs> and he's just yeah. like okay let me talk to the machine and then he has better luck with that it yes was, it was good <laughs> the the writing of that is just like hey you you your toys went crazy they blew up my shop lawsuit got it pause alan abernathy call me at this number <laughs> lawsuit <laughs> Yeah. Dan. <sighs> Man, I'm going to be a one note joke this entire time. Uh the ending what? scene is like the <laughs> best scene. It's 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 really oh, when they go out to sea? No, that scene shouldn't exist in this film. It's stupid and unnecessary. Um the the <laughs> final scene where all the characters get paid off by CEO Man. Uh that's a really yeah. good scene. It's pretty funny. Yeah, the emotional damage in my house is destroyed. You surely don't have enough money for that. Oh, you do. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Yeah, well, lots of fantastic moments in that scene. Uh, definitely the best one. I wish this movie had more of that. Guess I'll go next. Uh, the scene, uh, the scene where Kirsten Dunst has the riding lawnmower. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> it's another one of those scenes where the gremlins too. Mm-hmm. comes up bobs above the surface and it gets real wacky all, all it needed was like a little bit of stupid dialogue which it unfortunately did not have but yeah Kirsten Dunst like takes a riding lawnmower to the army of toy soldiers and that was pretty good and KZ uh the end of the second act where they're being chased along the road and then all the all the commandos combined to make like their their super multi car thing. Yeah, that because was this is the, that was really good. This, this was the most psychotic. This is where it truly became a psychotic film, where it's just they're shooting and 
<laughs> they shoot in a tree and catches on fire and completely falls down. They're blowing shit up everywhere. They do a sick jump and all of them just burn to death. And they're like, yeah, we did yeah. it. And you just hear the toys go, oh! Yeah, it's when you shoot somebody with a fire arrow and goes to sushi. <laughs> and that, was that, that was that part where I just went, I would have died here. That's it. <laughs> you said that a lot in this movie, Casey. I'm starting to think that you can be killed by someone leaving a roller skate in front of you. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, if it, if it had some sort of nail gun. I'm having a stroke because I just realized the person who plays uh, Phil Fimple's wife, Mariel Fimple, Marion Fimple, is the wife yeah. from American Dad. She's the co main character. same character. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I was like, I know that voice from somewhere. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let, let's move past this grenade. Uh, I'll, I'll go first with the, with the worst character. I'm I'm tempted to I'm giving it to David Cross's character because it just he just irritates me. Oh no, poor Irwin. That, that's is what... because he stuck a, the screwdriver into the <laughs> No, finger. no. I mean David Cross's there, there... personality is annoying people, so I get it. Right. <laughs> but like there's and this was a hard choice because he he's better in the later half of the movie, but like all his scenes in the first half, like for like the scene where he's where they find out that the other guy fucked up is like the first scene. He, he, he becomes a human being because him in that first scene, just like, well, well, companies make money. My entertaining, my inner educational toy line monster. He, he comes off as like almost developmentally disabled in the intro scene. I mean, that's kind of David Cross's with bit like, just coming like, off as like, like, daft to a point of unreasonableness. <laughs> <laughs> like even even the even the pastor thing, mine's Gizmo, is like, and then and then later he actually becomes like a he something was he gains sentience much like the toys they put the computer <laughs> yeah, chip put in his chip. brain. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he really irritated me in the opening of the movie. I like genuinely got frustrated listening to him talk just because he's such a bad character. Casey, you get to go second. I'm trying to think of like least favorite. Uh, it's hard. I can't think of anyone that's like, oh, I hate uh, Kirsten Dunst <laughs> as, as, as Christy Fimple. Yeah, uh, yeah, she's bad. Yeah, it's just, it's just, we need, we need a female lead here. We've gotten pretty much nothing else. I guess this will set up our Barbie set piece, or I'm sorry, Gwendy set piece. Completely yeah, different. you're not allowed to use Barbie. They're really, they're really protective of Barbie. Yeah, they maybe not don't want her killing people on TV. Uh, they probably just read the script <laughs> and just thought, why is it empty for forty pages in the middle here? Ugh. That's not a fucking joke. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's mine. Next, Bob. <laughs> Bob, it's your turn. I, I guess it's going to be the villain uh, toy, the movie quote man. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he's hazard. He's really bad. Yeah, I have no Tommy idea Lee why Jones. That, they just think it's funny. They every time, <laughs> and it's not. It's it's kind of funny. Like, not no. It. Let me correct myself. It isn't. It is it's funny. very funny, but it would have been acceptable in his first that first speech scene, but he just keeps doing it. It's That's, his only joke. They did a patent joke. They did an apocalypse now joke. That's what the smell of napalm in the morning is from. Yeah. Like he just every line is just a movie quote. And they're all war movies, as far as I caught. Then again, he does the "It's a Small World," which isn't a fucking war movie. Like it's because they're toys, which are like. Animatronic machines. <laughs> What's your like? It's like Disney. <sighs> it's a real stretch. Raw. Dan. I was hoping he forgot me. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're moving on to. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for it. I was like, hopefully he forgets. Hopefully he forgets. I'll let him. <laughs> there aren't any characters in this movie. Help. <laughs> I hate cardboard, yells irate man. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, now, Dan, if there's anything else you haven't gotten out in your pitch yet, you can say it now. 
Uh, I would go ahead and say <laughs> I that they got anything out in their pitch. It's whole movie. No, see, here's the thing. I read about this back in the day, but apparently this movie was supposed to be a lot harder for older audiences. And then at the last minute, they were like, oh, we're going to have some sponsorship and brand tie in. So we need to soften up the script. And then the sponsorship stuff pulled out. <sighs> Oh, that, sounds, so, that really oh, shows. Which is funny because when if you asked me 12 times, hey, Dan, what do you think this movie's missing? I wouldn't say hardcore violence and explosions and way scarier puppets. <laughs> hey, there, was a, there were some explosions. <laughs> That's kind of what I think it's missing. That's literally what they said. They were like, we're going to have a lot more explosions and violence and really hardcore puppets, but we pulled them out. Anyway, uh, least favorite character is, uh, I think it's the best choice. Um, main character's mom. Oh, so hear me out. Okay. In her first five seconds on screen, she eats a salad, tells her husband to calm down, is a spiritualist, and is wearing an outfit for a job we don't even see or imply she has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, no. what is what is this character? Are we gonna like? Is we oh, both isolate gonna... a single scene with her to try <laughs> and try to favor? Or, or yeah, we're trying to pedestal. we're trying to fill in the character. <laughs> yes, my, yeah, my... it's like oh, she's like spiritual, just very calm, and then she kills people with tennis racket. She's like, she's like, hey, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. And he's like, no, not this time. Um, yeah, if she wasn't there. Uh, I feel like the main character's dad couldn't lock his full potential <laughs> and beat his son. I guess I don't know. I didn't and, <laughs> and make and make God of War <laughs> with the metal black. Uh, but yeah, apparently this movie was PG thirteen. It seems really fucking toothless for a PG thirteen movie. Well, yeah, they probably. Oh wait, really? It came out and it was PG thirteen. Wow, that's what it says. They were probably going for an R. And then the shit that was just left over was kind of toothless. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, no. What not a shame. A, not a fan of her character. Probably should have gone to her job and somehow had toys running around in there or something. For some reason, and she was wearing her. a work outfit. And they killed her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, could you imagine they fucking murder his mom at her job? And then the husband's like, no. Dun, 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 dun. What is that? What are you Who's doing? Because that? <laughs> that's insane. That's a very different film. <laughs> yeah, if anyone died in this movie, it would have made the dolls much scarier. <laughs> His dad stomps towards quote men in like and like a glowing circle button appears <laughs> over him. <laughs> Uh, for example, what if Timmy Fimple was murdered and Kirsten Dunks got angry and thus had to act in this film? <laughs> Impossible. Oh, let's not, let's not no. get scary. KZ, <laughs> you have to tell us the worst scene now. Of course you give me this one. You know I love this film. There's so much great stuff in it. <laughs> you uh, just can't remember uh, anything that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it just comes down to like... My thing is always, I gotta pick... The very cream of the crop and not random bad scene. <laughs> so that that's what effectively makes it a little bit worse. Um the scene in which they're um which main character Alan is talking with Christy and just hanging out in the toy store talking about his uh his rough past of calling in bomb threats. Uh I started disassociating a little bit because I was like, oh, I get get to get to the part where the toys try to shoot them with nail guns. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was watching that scene, and I'm like, okay, we're going to develop this character a little bit more, right? Will that make <laughs> sense at all for him to... Nope, that's just a thing you said he did, and this character on screen doesn't seem like he would do that. This this really sucks, because now it's just like, what was that in the original script? Because it was something in the original script. Yeah, the kid probably actually had those explosives in the original script, and he's like, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would make sense. And then, like, the part where the toy blows up the fence is like, so I make bombs. What about it? <laughs> yeah, the toys just get access to his entire explosive can setup. You, can you imagine they cast some hardcore kid instead of white bread? I think, I can't. It, I think it's, it's nice. funnier if what I think it's funnier if white bread kid is like actually an arsonist. Yeah. Uh, as for me, God. I'm gonna p there, there are so many of these scenes that are just nothing happens next scene <laughs> nothing happens 
next scene in the first half of this movie. So I guess I'll go with the one where uh, he's just dicking around in his room and the toy talks like twice and then he goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's followed up by uh, the, the Archer going on the computer and learning about presidents. Yeah. And in Carta, information that didn't come in handy here at all. That God, scene really, was completely well, 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 worthless. Yeah. Well, let it. Well, it led into the ending where. Yeah. Oh, what a good ending goes, too. We really needed that was. that beautiful scene early on to build up to that ending. That's stupid. I think the ending's fine. What's your problem? Yeah, I think with the ending, it was fine. Dan. Yeah, Tell me end. your least favorite scene. Explain your ire with it if in case it's the ending. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? Do I get to do that? Yes, it's okay. your turn. Yeah, okay, so the ending, because somehow we're supposed <laughs> to have an emotional connection to these toys being sent down a river to go terrorize <laughs> someone else. Like like somehow sending these toys down a river is river is gonna set them free and they're gonna be able to cohabit with the wild successfully. Like what the fuck are they doing? Presumably they have a battery. There was no arc about them needing to be free this whole time this is an emancipation scene in a movie that wasn't about that well, well but he that's says the that, lore that, of their characters they have to go find gorgon and they think gorgon's out by that <laughs> lake because uh, he looks at png and the, and the kids, no, they like, specifically think it's yosamity and, uh, and the kids just like oh whatever fuck them let them think whatever <laughs> <laughs> what was it was also the it was also the boat from the toy store it's kino i know it, it was yes it all comes together it really doesn't, though. The movie didn't feel like it was really about that. What what it felt like it was about was the Gorgons just hiding in a box while everyone dies. I, I, I'm sorry. One, they wrote them like that. No, they always have to hide because they'll lose. Two, they can't delete these characters. They've already made them. It's too late, so they have to do something. <laughs> if I could have my way, they'd be gone. Do you think that entire ending scene is just because, um... Yes. Is just because, like, the Indian in the cupboard came out three years earlier? One, <laughs> kind of, yes, God. actually. Because that's the vibes it gave me. Two, uh, I think it was after they ripped out enough parts that the original movie was going to be to soften it a bit. That's when the good guy Gorgonites or whatever were added. That's when... Yes, because you can have assumption. yeah, you can have this entire movie without the Gorgonites. They don't do yeah. anything for ninety five percent of it, and they don't tie into any other part of it thematically or action wise mm -hmm. well at all. It's it's the Gorgonites suck yeah, so we bad. We should have someone should have nominated all of the Gorgonites. <laughs> it's the worst character. Well, see, that's the problem. You have to nominate literally all of them, and that's not a character, <laughs> right? You yeah, and I, and I would I would never nominate Insaniac. He's raw. <laughs> he is. He you he looks like liked. one of the one of those graphics you see on a monster truck toy. Yes. Look, Insaniac is just raspberry blue carrot top. Okay. <laughs> Don't ruin him. Hey, carrot top will kick the shit out of you. He's fucking yoked, yeah. He's pal. ripped. He's jacked. Every time I see a picture of him, it kicks the shit out of me. I, f I feel like you could have, like, kept the intro scene where it's, like, sniveling guy wants the Gorgonites, but the Commando Elite went out. And then the end of the movie is like, all right, we're just going to make that other brand of toys now. <laughs> right. And that's yeah. how you could have included them instead of having them. <laughs> or just have that uh, guy cast into the desert because CEO military complex man doesn't take losers. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it like I, I've seen this before. In my memories, the Gorgonites really did more, but they just don't do shit in this. Yes, actually, that was also in my I, memory. I, I would yeah. say, check this out. This might be true. I think characters say the word Gorgonite for a longer period of time than the Gorgonites are on screen doing anything. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, they're never on screen doing anything, so... God. Well, I'm thankful that that giant satellite dish fell on top of them so that they didn't get hit by the EMP blast made by that. <laughs> yeah, I, I still I, the, don't 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 even think about how that actually worked. It makes sense. <laughs> Butts poop chocolate. They put a, they put a chip <laughs> in it. The, the toy covered in rubber, explicitly rubber, can conduct. Uh, Don't worry uh, about it. Casey, Casey, plastic doesn't come off like that when you pull it, like when he pulled off the other guy's face. Yeah, different material for different brands. Okay, that, we're done with our segment. 
<laughs> Does anybody have any final thoughts on small soldiers? Did I pick a worse scene? No. <laughs> You didn't? Yeah. Oh no, you are last. Okay, I forgot. That's why I was Bob, stuck. Don't you were skip, that's why I was Dan's stuck. Like, I wish that was me. <laughs> um, Bob, <laughs> tell us the worst scene. I'm gonna repin something. <laughs> the the worst scene. This is really small, but it's with the Gorgonites. There's this scene where the Gorgonite they Frankenstein'd into being like half radio, half him because he was torn apart. I guess. Yeah. Uh, he's watching Frankenstein, the movie, on TV and just says, I connect with you. And I was just like, this is the most ham-fisted <laughs> worst thing ever and nothing's happening and I want to die. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like it hit you with a bat. None of the Gorgonites were characters. They don't even get come into the movie until like an hour in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it's so bad. Now we can talk about our final thoughts. Um, being a bad movie doesn't mean you're intellectually flatlining me. Small Soldiers is intellectually flatlining me. That's part of why I gave it negative four. So little happens. It's intellectually flatlining me. Yeah, because I just sat I, there and I'm like, is, are we are we just watching <laughs> special effects that I, are kind I, of neat? Is, is that, that amazing? I, re I really happen? wanted a I wanted a thinker when I was coming in for Small Soldiers. Uh, I wanted, yeah, I, I would I say kind of, I wanted my neurons to fire i think there's more intellectual honesty and earnesty in fucking a romantic comedy than there is in small soul <laughs> i don't know about that and i don't want to uh, test it you, you, you <laughs> want to follow this up not on recording you just, just want to watch what uh, how to lose a guy in 10 days after this actually you know what you know what now that we're having this conversation i think we've dodged romantic comedy somehow for the first 20 plus episodes of curse content club no no we wa we watched we watched a hallmark movie uh, 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 no, no, we watched George of the Jungle. <laughs> Not, you know what? None of those were cursed content club. They were cursed content by committee. We we watched um, what was the one where the white guy was trying to act urban? Oh, that was oh, committee oh, oh, content by true. committee. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Dan doesn't get to pick for a little right while. Mm, that is true. It's Bob's pick next, thankfully. So you picking toys, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, actually, Paul Blart. That Paul Blart counts. <laughs> oh, is Robert yeah. the comedy? Okay. Yeah, I guess Paul Blart counts. <laughs> the romantic comedy, Paul Blart. <laughs> There's nothing quite as romantic as licking a lollipop that's stuck on the ground to not die from diabetes. <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by our lordly executive producers. Esme. E. Lee Broyles. Star Falcon. Spaceman Spiff. Danny Richardson. Red Blaze 27, Third Birthday Win, and Adam Macarena. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. Soar on over to patreon.com slash gigboots and become an executive producer today.